friends and family, thank you for being here today. It's an important day to be together as we grieve the loss of someone who loved all of us so well. When we gather together like this, love has a way of multiplying and spreading. And we know that that's what Walter would have wanted for all of us today. We gather here with grief in our hearts too, and that's okay. Even though we share a faith in eternal life through Christ, we also gather here knowing that we won't have Walter in our lives for a while. And that's hard and tender. It will leave a big hole in our families, our friendships. And so it's okay to grieve. <coughs> but that's why we're here together. That by gathering together, we can stand in solidarity against death. That we know because of Christ, death <coughs> does not have the final word. Because of Christ, we know that our grief is temporary and our joy and our love that Walter modeled so well is forever. Would you hear these words of grace? We remember today that Jesus said, I am the resurrection and I am the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, yet shall they live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. I die, and behold, I am alive forevermore, and I hold the keys of hell and death. Because I live, you shall live also. As we gather together today to comfort each other, I, wanna, I know there are a lot of moments today where words will be easy to find. Memories will come up. There will be stories you can't not tell. But there's also moments where it's difficult to put into words what we're feeling and how we need God to be present with us. In those moments, we can lean on the faith of those who have come before us and the wisdom, particularly contained in Scripture. Wisdom like what we find in the 23rd Psalm. And so I'll recite it for us, but I know it's one that many of you know by heart. And if you do... Don't resist the temptation to recite it along with me. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He made it me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restored my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Let's stand and sing our faith together with a favorite hymn of Walter's, The Old Rugged Cross. It's number 504 in the red hymnals in your pews, and we'll be singing the first and last verses.
I invite you to hear these words from John 14. Jesus said, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the place that I am going. You know the way to get there. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. I've said these things to you while I am still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world does. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. These are important words for us today. Without them, to use Jesus' own words, our hearts might be troubled. But instead, we have this beautiful promise that Jesus has gone ahead of us to lead the way to God's house. A house so big that there are, some translations say, many rooms in it. But the original Greek is closer to the meaning of a house with many houses in it. In other words, in God's house, there is room for all of us. And a special place for all of us. And we know the way there, Jesus says. It's the way that he leads. We as Christians are often called followers of Christ for this reason. It's because we're following Jesus' example, following his way. And when we follow Jesus' way, we're able, because of what Christ did for us, to actually follow him through death into life after death, just like Jesus did. That leads us to God's house. And the nature of that way can be summed up in one word. Love. Not cheap love. Not sappy, sentimental, fair-weather love. But real love. Costly love. Faithful love. <clears throat> the kind of love that breaks social boundaries, makes new friends, causes healing to happen. The kind of love that would die for you. And if that's the way of Jesus Christ that leads to God's house, is there any doubt about where Walter is today? Because he clearly followed that way of love as modeled by Jesus Christ. Walter had an exceptional knack for loving people. And when I, I talked to folks over the last week, the past few days, I was surprised, this doesn't always happen, I was surprised that people used the same words over and over again to describe him that he never met a stranger, that he was gentle and kind, that he was faithful, that he was like a brother. That's how it seems everyone knew Walter. And that's exceptional. Walter was the kind of person where you couldn't hardly cage in his desire to make new friends. 
As Walter and Sherry made their, their way across country in the middle of COVID, <coughs> intentionally taking the camper so they could avoid people, do you think Walter avoided people at the campsite? <laughs> he did not. When Walter went to get his own prosthetic leg fit, a time where he needed help, he needed support, wouldn't you know it, but he was turning to another woman in the clinic and giving her encouragement, giving her support. When a friend loses his mom, who's the first one to show up at his door and to offer support? It's Walter. And so many times, I, when I asked people, how did you meet Walter? How long have you known him? I swear this man has a hundred lifelong friends. <laughs> it's like he kept every friend he made from birth all along the way. <laughs> because so many of you say we became friends in elementary school, in middle school, and we just stayed close all these years. People don't keep a friend like that unless they're worth keeping. And I know so many of you sit here with memories trembling in your heart. Many outdoor memories. Fishing, camping, hunting, getting lost with a friend stubborn enough to get you lost, but good enough that you enjoy it and it becomes a fond memory afterward. Walter was that kind of friend. And it was a privilege for me, even though our relationship was brief, that I got to experience it's what he gave to so many of you. <clears throat> that when I walked in the first day to his home expecting to be a stranger, I immediately found that I was not. That is the way of Jesus Christ. And it's the way of Jesus Christ because <coughs> it's the kind of love that has the potential to transform the world. As Mark Cagle put it, it's as though Walter embodied the song, What a Friend I Have in Jesus. And there's no better compliment that a follower of Christ could receive than to know that they made others think of Jesus Christ when they thought of them. And so today, my intent here is to start a sermon that I hope will finish afterward. Because what I've just said, I know that every one of you has a story to go along with it, to illustrate just the kind of love and friendship and family and fathering and grandfathering and husbanding that Walter was able to do with his life. Let's tell those stories. The church has provided some finger food uh, to entice you after the service to stick around and share some of those stories with one another. But when we tell them, we're able to show people this is what it's like. This is the way to God's house with many rooms. And if there's a dwelling place there for each one of us, personalized, then I've had fun imagining Walter's dwelling place that might look a little more like a camper. <laughs> but set up in the campsite in that way that tells everyone I'm ready for visitors, the rug out front, the tiki torches are ready, the chairs are set out, and Walter is just there sitting in one of them, waiting for the next new friend to come by. Amen. I invite you to hear these words from the book of Revelation and to find comfort in them together today. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first ever 
heaven, and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them as their God. They will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away. Amen.
God, we know that all you have given us is yours. We are grateful for Walter's life. <coughs> grateful for who he was to each of us. Thank you for making him and shaping him and being with him his whole life long. And so now, as you first gave Walter Wilson to us, we give him back to you. Receive him into the arms of your mercy. <coughs> Raise him up with all your people. <coughs> and receive us too. Raise us up into a new life. A life that is following the way of Jesus Christ. A way characterized by love. God, we are grateful to you for everything that you've given us. And on this particular day, God, we are especially grateful for your Son, Jesus Christ. Thank you that he knew our griefs. He knows what it like, it's like for us to grieve today. Thank you that he died our death and took it for us and rose again for our sake. Thank you that he lives and prays for us today, and that we can pray as he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Let's praise God together with amazing grace. It's number 378 in our handles, and we'll sing the first and last verse. <laughs> family out first, and then we hope that you will join us there. <laughs> 